चैप्टर फाइव पीरियोडिक क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स नाउ लेट अस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टेक ए डेली लाइफ एग्जांपल व्हेन यू विजिट ए शॉप और ए मॉल एंड यू हैव टू सर्च फॉर द सोप यू विल फाइंड एट ए पर्टिकुलर प्लेस ऑल डिफरेंट वैरायटीज ऑफ सोप आल्सो यू विल फाइंड दैट the bathing soaps are placed separately from the washing soaps shampoos are kept separately cereals are kept separately pulses are kept separately so a grouping of similar elements have been done and uh, same need arose to study the properties of the elements that uh, elements should be grouped together on the basis of their properties so that it becomes easy to study the properties of the elements so earlier attempts were made by dobriner in 1817 johann wolfgang dobriner a german scientist designed a method to classify the elements in the form of triads which are called dobriner's triads he grouped three elements together keeping in mind that the atomic mass of the middle element is average of the atomic masses of the other two elements like this this is one triad second triad and third triad lithium sodium potassium let us see the what is the average of the atomic masses of lithium and potassium when you add up the atomic masses of lithium and potassium and divided by 2 what do you get you get 23 so this satisfies the conditions put by dobriner let us see the second triad in this case let us add up the atomic masses of the first and the third element and see if it is equal to the atomic mass of the middle element round about it is equal to the atomic mass of strontium the third triad the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5 and that of iodine is This is also approximately equal to the atomic mass of bromine. But Dobriner could not classify or could not group all the elements known at that time. He could only group these elements, and uh, only three triads he could make. So his attempt more or less failed. Then another scientist, Newlands, gave the law of octaves now what he did he arranged the elements known at that time in increasing order of their atomic masses and he found that while when he arranged atom elements like this he found that eighth elements properties were similar to the properties of the first element just like the musical notes sa re ga ma pa da ni so the eighth element eighth note is similar to the first note and this is uh, western note the do do re mi fa so la ti right so he arranged the elements known at that time in increasing order of their atomic masses at that time only 56 elements were known 
Now, he found that the properties of if you start with lithium the properties of sodium which is the 8th element are similar to that of lithium. Similarly, property of sodium are similar to that of potassium. Sodium if it is the first element potassium is the 8th element. Like this he could arrange some of the elements, but he could find uh, arrange them up to calcium only up to calcium only the uh, this rule was observed and later on this uh, so many limitations were there anomalies defects were found due to which this Newland's law of octaves was also rejected. Now, let us discuss now what were the limitations what were the anomalies or defects. As I have just now told you it was applicable only up to calcium and uh, later it did not follow the rule. And uh, Newlands assumed that only 56 elements exist in the nature and he thought that no more elements will be discovered. Also what he did? To fit the elements into the table, he adjusted two elements at some places. At one place, two elements he adjusted. And in doing so, what he did, let us say this example, let us take the example of cobalt and nickel. Cobalt and nickel are placed along with fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, which are totally different in properties. So, because of these anomalies, Newland's law of octaves was also rejected. Mendeleev was another scientist who made another attempt to classify the elements. He was a Russian scientist and his full name was Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev. He took atomic mass as the criteria of classifying the elements. What he did? He arranged the elements in increasing order of their atomic masses and he found that the properties of the elements are repeated after regular intervals. And from this he concluded that the properties of the elements are periodic function of their atomic masses. So, Mendeleev's periodic law is based on this uh, uh, atomic mass the properties of the elements are periodic function of their atomic masses. When he arranged the elements some elements were arranged in the horizontal rows which were called periods and there were vertical columns in which elements were arranged which were called groups. At that time about 63 elements were known. And in Mendeleev's periodic table, there were 7 periods and 8 groups. He found that the properties of the elements depend on the atomic mass. And uh, he kept in mind that when elements combine with the hydrogen and oxygen, the similar elements form similar type of compounds. So, he kept in mind the formula of hydrides and oxides of the elements that similar elements will have the same formula of hydrides and oxides on the basis of which he classified the 63 elements known at that time in the form of rows and in the form of uh, uh, which are called periods and in the form of vertical, vertical columns which are called groups. What he did? He took 63 cards on which he wrote the names of the elements and he wrote the properties of the elements on those cards and try to arrange those elements in such a way that similar elements are grouped together in a group in a vertical column. And he found that the elements are being arranged in increasing order of their atomic masses. Also, while arranging the elements in increasing order of their atomic masses, 
he had to leave certain gaps in the periodic table and he predicted that some elements will be discovered later on and will be placed on in those gaps. So, he predicted the existence of some more elements which will be discovered later on and also what he did he not only predicted the existence of the elements, he also predicted the properties of those elements which will be placed in those gaps and uh, he named them as say eka silicon means silicon is the preceding element and the gap after silicon will be filled by that element which will be discovered later on. Eka aluminum is the preceding element and later on of course, uh, the elements were discovered, these metals were discovered scandium, gallium and germanium, scandium, gallium placed uh, after aluminum in the periodic table and germanium after silicon was placed in the periodic table and their properties were also found to be similar as predicted by Mendeleev. At that time novel gases were not discovered and later on when novel gases were discovered they were placed in a separate group without disturbing the order of the periodic table. So, it was a very good attempt made by Mendeleev to classify the various elements known at that time. So, let us now discuss the merits of uh, Mendeleev's periodic table and also the demerits or limitations of Mendeleev's periodic table. Uh, most of the merits we have already discussed, let us just revise only. Mendeleev predicted the existence of some elements which were not known at that time. He left some gaps in the periodic table and said these elements will be discovered later on and he also predicted the properties of those elements which were not known at that time and noble gases were not discovered till, till that time. Later on when they were discovered, they got a separate place in the periodic table and were placed in the periodic table without disturbing the current order of the periodic table. Now, let us come to limitations of Mendeleev's periodic table. Now, because the elements uh, are arranged in increasing order of their atomic masses, so it was uh, not possible how to place the isotopes in the periodic table because isotopes are the atoms and el elements having same atomic number but different atomic masses. Isotopes have similar properties cannot be placed separately. So, isotopes cannot be placed together also because they have different atomic masses. So, this was an anomaly, this was a limitation. Isotopes should be placed together in fact. Also, in order to group the elements with similar properties together, he had to place an atomic, an atom with the higher atomic mass before the element of lower atomic mass. So, wrong order of atomic masses were there in the periodic table. For example, argon has atomic mass 40, it was placed before potassium with atomic mass 39. Then position of hydrogen, hydrogen uh, he, he did not know how to place it because hydrogen behaves as metals, it reacts like metals, it uh, combines with the uh, like uh, halogens. Uh, oxygen, sulphur in the same manner as metals and also like non-metals it uh, exists as in the diatomic form like H2, it exists as H2 as the non-metals exist Cl2, Br2, I2. So, he did not know where to place hydrogen. So, these are certain limitations of the Mendeleev's periodic table, but Mendeleev made a very remarkable attempt in classifying the elements and uh, it is known till now 